Good morning everybody and a very warm welcome to Millenhall and Districts and my name is Susanna and I live with trains and today I'm going to show you how I do my rock faces. Um, I was going to re-upload a video from like about 10 years ago from when I did it um, because I originally did a um, rock face over at my original layout Behringer which I originally put up on YouTube and I was going to re-upload it as a bit of nostalgia and it's essentially a very similar thing because not much has changed in the terms of the, the process of it all but I thought I'd sort of do this version because when I did the original video I was using an originally a handheld camera and when it auto-focused it was making these kind of woodpecker noises and those of you who have um, been with me that far back will probably know what I'm talking about or might remember what I'm talking about so this is basically an updated version of that video. Um, but first, to begin with, um, I just wanted to clear up a couple of points from my previous video, um, which was to do with my class 73s. Um, I had a few comments on that. Um, one was asking me about how I actually change the lighting over um, if you've got the wrong lighting. Um, in terms of basically the lighting facing that way and the loco going that way. Um, and basically, I did actually show on my, um, I think it's my Southwest Trains video, when I opened up the body, I showed you which two to do. It's basically the motor plus and the motor minus wires you need to basically flip around. That's all you have to do, just swap the, swap the two over. Um, and that's because I know you can reverse it via the CVs, which is probably easier, but I found that that hasn't always worked. And sometimes by reversing the CV, you're, also, you're not only reversing CV functions for the lighting, but you're also reversing the motor functions at the same time, which is why it doesn't always work. So basically, if you desolder the motor minus um, wire and solder that to the motor plus and the motor plus to the motor minus, you're actually reversing the motor, but not changing the CVs. So that's why it should then work. So hopefully that clears that up. And like I said, I did show you the two that you need to do on my Southwest Trains um, video that I did. Also, um, I got asked about my um, GB Rail Freight sound fitted and what the product code was for that. Now I did show it on the previous video, but since I've got it to hand, I will show you that. So if you wanna sort of pause that and make a note of that, then that's the one that I do actually have. Um, and as you can see, it's a very beautiful locomotive. And since you heard, it's also a very lovely sounding locomotive and there she is. Now today is all about making rock moulds, uh, rocks, I should say, I keep saying rock moulds. You don't make rock moulds, you buy them. So it's going to be a bit of a step-by-step -step how to. So if you're interested in doing something like this, then you can see what I've been up to. Um, because it's, it's always something that's a bit tricky, but it's very satisfying to have it on the layout. And I think it makes, it gives a lot more interest to the layout, especially if you're doing like sort of like country scenes and things and you want to make it like there's a rock cutting. You know, there's various ways of doing it. I've done it in various ways before. Now the first thing you're going to need is basically you're going to need some rock moulds and what I did is I bought my rock moulds from um, I think it was it was from eBay I think it was originally because um, I don't think Paul had the ones that I was after or, or something I can't remember it's like I said this is going back like about 10 years um, but you can either get them from your local model shop or you can get them via eBay now like I said, you can just if you go on eBay, you can just type in woodland scenic rock moulds and it'll come up with all the various um, woodland scenic rock moulds that you can buy. Or if you just type in um, rock moulds on eBay, it will also come up with various other ones. Now, it doesn't really specify; just nece doesn't necessarily have to be about rock moulds. It can be like these because you can get moulds for retaining walls like this, but. Essentially, the casting is, is the way of casting it is still the same way. So, if you were to buy a retaining wall rock mold, um, which could be something like this, for example, you could make your own. These I didn't. Um, these ones here, I actually bought a set of ten, 
and I think they cost me about £60 when I bought them, I think. Um, but they are beautiful and they are very effective. The ones on the back are fake because you don't see them. So what I did is I basically um, created a template so it matches what's on the front, but I use plastic card on the back. So the ones on the back are actually fake, but the ones on the front here are proper um, resin, uh, well, say resin, plaster cast um, molding, uh, moldings. So you can actually do that as well. So it doesn't necessarily mean um, that you have to get retaining, uh, just, just for rock castings, you can get um, retaining wall molds as well. So it's entirely up to you. So it's just to point you in that direction. Because sometimes if you like um, in a flat, uh, sorry, in a garage or in, in a shed or in a, in a loft, say, you might be susceptible to temperature changes. And if you're susceptible to temperature changes or you've got Metcalf kits and they start, or, or any other cardboard kits that might start to sort of get a bit a bit um, um, mouldy or maybe a bit soft or, or something, or suffering from those kind of conditions. Um, and you might, or maybe you just don't like the, the, the ones that you've got, or you don't fancy buying Metcalf retaining walls and you want something a bit different. You can actually buy these kind of mouldings um, for these kind of retaining walls and for the rocks. And it's not, it's not temperature, it won't be affected by temperature. The only thing I would say about this is that you can't cut it. You know, it's not the sort of thing that you can cut and shape. It's just like once it's cast, it's cast and you just line them all up together. So you can't actually sort of try and trim it down or whatever, because it's not, it's not going to be very nice with all the dust and everything like that. So, you know, that's the thing. So if you want to do curves and things like that, it's probably not that practical, but this is just a complete straight line. So it looks great. So anyway, back to the video. So yeah, you're gonna need some rock molds of some description. Um, you're also, and I've got two, and I've had these two for 10 years. So, and, um, and as you can see, there's actually some in it already to be taken out, but I'm gonna show you that shortly because I'm going to hand over to myself shortly to show you how I do the mixture and then we'll come back to the opening. The other thing you're going to need is obviously you need the actual um, cut plaster cast itself and this is um, Hydrocal by Spudland Scenics. Um, I've seen some American people use, I think there's another one, there's, is it Super Plaster or something like that? There's another one that's just Super Strength Plaster or something like that that's just come out. I think that's fairly recently or something, but I'm using the tried and tested um, Hydrocal. Um, you also need a whisk. Um, you also need some sort of container or dispenser to be able to dispense, because this is like um, like polyfiller powder, essentially, and you just basically pour the amount, you treat it exactly the same, and then you basically just mix it in until you get the right consistency, pour it into the moulds, and then once it's dry, it should come out like that. And then you then pop it out. The other thing you're gonna need is um, ready to use plaster. This one I've got from Wilco's, quick drying filler. Um, that's, that's all you need, just some filler. Um, and, and then we get onto the colors. And a lot of this is very much personal choice. It's totally down to you. So like I just explained, you know, you can get various rock molds. So it doesn't have to be the ones that I've got. You can get various ones. Just look it up on eBay. Have a look, see what you think. Uh, same as with the walls. So if you want to do it for walls instead of rock molds, you can actually um, use the same technique, but just pour it into a retaining wall mold and then you can just pop it out and use it that way. So a lot of this is very much down to yourself as to what kind of results you're looking for. So I'm now going to hand over to myself. I'm going to show you how I've poured and made, created a mixture to pour it onto this. And then we're going to come back to me here. And basically I'm going to show you how to pop it out and what happens when you do. So see you shortly. So here you are joining me at the kitchen because we're now going to move on to the next step which is to actually, once you've decided which rock molds you're gonna buy and which ones you've got, 
and you've got your hydrocal. The next thing is to actually make the rocks themselves. Now, all week I've been making these rocks, so I'm now come to the end of my hydrocal. So whenever I buy one of these bags, and it comes in a big bag, um, I usually just um, make just make it just completely use it all up because then you know exactly how much you've got left. So here, this is this here it is. Is a hydrocal C1201. That's what I've been using. And then what you need is a pot. Um, this is just an old soup pot I've got, and like I said, this is the remainder of it. It's probably not going to be enough to do two um, to use the two rock molds, but you'll get the gist. So all you do is just pour it in here. It does get quite messy, to be honest. And um, and then that's it. That's that finished. That bag finished with hydrocal. So this is the last bit of hydrocal I got. So like I said, you can see it comes in a powdery form. It does make a bit of a mess. Um, then what you need to do is get some sort of releasing agent, um, like window cleaner or something like that, and just and just mist it in the mould. What that does is when it comes to taking out the mould, you basically, it makes life a little bit easier. So that, that's the whole point of it. And then what you need to do is get some water into this and you need to try and get this into a creamy consistency. So as you can see, I've just poured some water in it. We'll see how we go with it. You might need some more. Yeah, it definitely needs some more. And basically, you're just whisking it in and blending it in as best as you can. And I've also got hidden here, which I did have. Bear with me one moment. Just got a plastic stick, and this basically um, it's to mix up all to get right in there where the whisk can't quite reach. And I don't know if you can see that, but you can see that there's not, it's just the right creamy consistency. There isn't any water. Usually if there's too much water in it, it will start to pull out. Any excess water, you just have to drain that out. It is a bit of trial and error because I've had this, these issues with it in the beginning where it was a bit of trial and error. And then what you do is you've got your rock mould. And then you just basically simply pour it in. You can see it is a good consistency. And you just pour it in. And this will probably be, to be honest, it might be able to use the other, the other rock mould as well. So let me just get the other one then. I didn't think it'd be enough, but there might be enough to use. I've got this is the, the other one that I'm going to use. And that will, just so you don't waste it, you just and we'll see how far we get. I don't tend to use these little ones because these little ones, they, they just, they're not deep enough. And then what you can do is just, just move the mould about so the, um, the plaster gets into all the nooks and crannies.
and then once you're happy with that so you you move all this around to make sure it's all in there it's all in there and i think that's going to go off really well so now you've got to let it set so what you can do is you can either leave it to one side overnight or if you've got space in your fridge you can put it in your fridge and let it go off in the fridge actually this was something that danny was talking to me about last week um, I had done it and it does sort of speed up the process and you'll know when it goes off generally what I tend to do with these things is I make this and then I'll go off to work because then by the time I come back from work it's already done so that's how I do it and then you can just build it up over the week and this is what I've been doing all week just been making molds all week and then as I come back from work just take out another one put in another batch to go off overnight and then I repeat the process in the morning until I've finished the box which I now have so join me later on and we'll see how we get on with these rock moulds that I've just done. So now you've seen how I've done it. And um, I think I might have mentioned in the previous clip, but I can't remember what I actually said. So in case I haven't mentioned it, what I tended to do, I've created these all the rocks that I've made. Um, like I said, I've used a whole box and... I've, what I've done is I've basically created over the week that I've been at work. So before I go to work, I'll do a set. And then by the time I get home, that's dry. And then basically before I go to bed, I'll do another set. So it goes off overnight and basically keep repeating the process until I've gone through the whole hydrocal pack until I've got enough rocks that I need to create what I need to do. So now you know how it comes. Now, like I said, you can see that this is dry. So you saw how it went in and you saw how it holds. So now the thing to do with this is it doesn't matter whether this splits or not. Um, obviously, ideally, you'd like it to come out in one piece, but it doesn't necessarily always come out in one piece. But that's not necessarily a problem. So don't sort of if this is your first time doing this kind of thing and it sort of splits or breaks, don't panic and don't worry about it because you can always um, infill it and it might not fit anyway and then you might have to sort of put in other bits in order to make it fit into the space you want so it's never really a problem now what you need to do with this is you kind of need to try and I see if we can do it online you sort of try and push it apart a bit like I said it doesn't always come out in one piece but you just sort of as you can see I'm just, just trying to push it out a bit now like I said I've used that kind of releasing agent before I'm trying to do this on camera it doesn't always work but I did use the releasing agent and I can see it's not going to come out in one piece because there's a bit of it that seems to be but it doesn't like oh yeah I can definitely see it's not going to come out in one piece but like I said it doesn't really matter as you can see I'm just trying to spread it I'm sorry I'm not trying to and then you just try and pop it out but there you go as you can see it's popping out but it hasn't popped out in one piece but it doesn't matter as you can see look that's what I've ended up with and that piece can just go on the floor there and then you can see that I've got a couple of other bits but sometimes you can't use these bits if you can't use it then I'll throw it away but there is a bit here that looks that's a tiny little piece there and sometimes those pieces you can use as like little infills but basically you can see that's that's how it's come out with that one so it's it virtually came out in one piece but not quite but like I said don't panic if it doesn't come out in one piece it doesn't always come out like that but it doesn't need to be because it doesn't matter because I'll show you why afterwards and then we've got the little one and again, it's the same process. You just sort of spread it, oh, sort of spread it out. Just try and pull it apart. And then hopefully, get your finger under it. Oh, there you go, it's popped. And you've got another piece there. Again, it didn't, come out totally clean sometimes it does sometimes it doesn't but it really doesn't matter and then we've got this other piece here and again you just just 
pull it out. Now this part, this look, this one's come out clean. This one's come out in one piece. There you go. So I've been doing this all week. So let me show you the results of the week's production. Now, bearing in mind that this has cost me £16.50 for the box of Hydrocal. Now, obviously, um, you've got the initial outlay of the plaster moulds, of the rock moulds, I should say. And I think they're about £12 each. But in the long run, if you use it often enough, you will get your money back from them. Because I think a pack of these um, rock moulds, ready rock moulds, are essentially not too far off the cost of the Hydrocal pack. Now let me show you how much, how much I've made with the rocks. And as you can see, I've made all these rocks that are here. You can't sort of... It might be a bit difficult to see, but you can see, oh, no, right, okay, I'm doing it this way. Yeah, so there's basically, I'll just show you, that's, yeah, that's a better angle. So basically, this one pack of Hydrocal, one box, Hydrocal has done all of this. And as you can see, there are various, various sizes here. Um, so there's odd little bits, there's, and this one's actually a big bit here. This one here is a big bit, but it's actually split. But it marries up to that one. So I've just kept those two together. But you might not necessarily need to do it like that. Um, at this point, you can go one of two ways. And I've seen people do it in a couple of ways. Um, some people will now, and I've seen it on American channels as well, that there are people there who, when they do their rock moulds, will have their rocks laid out like this and then they'll start painting it and colouring it here like this and you can go down that way um, like I said there's no right or wrong but my own personal um, way of doing it that I prefer is I prefer to create the wall first as one piece and then basically do the colouring afterwards because then it will all blend in together better because um, sometimes if you just sort of paint these all individually, then sometimes the one bit of rock that goes next to it isn't really going to match the one next to that. And the other thing is, you have to then stitch it all in. That's the other thing, which is why I'd rather colour it in afterwards, which is what I'll show you. I'll show you what I mean by stitching it in. I've shown you this before, but I will show you the whole process again. And, that will, that, and that's the reason why I prefer not to paint it at this stage, but like I said, there's no reason why you couldn't. Um, say for example, if you only wanted to use just one piece like this for a particular area, there's no reason why you couldn't paint this and pop it on the layout. But if you're trying to stitch all these bits of um, rock mold together, then it's f from my point of view, I prefer to have the whole wall made first and then basically, um, stitch it all up and then once it's all stitched then I can colour it all in one go. So this is basically the product of a whole week's work and also using one box of Hydrocal. So there are two areas that I'd like to tackle with my rock moulds that I've made. One area is basically this corner here at Goswell Sidings. Now, I love Goswell Sidings, but I want to enhance it some more. And I feel like this looks okay, but it isn't really, I don't, excuse the shadows, I don't think it's really that realistic, in all honesty. Because it's so sheer, I think it would have been better with rock. So that's one of the areas, is this little area here. And then the other area that I'd like to do is at the bedroom at the back on the curve there which needs to be tackled so those are the two areas so I'm going to work on this area here and I'm going to show you how I do it 
and then we'll just crack on with it and I'll show you how we put it together, stitch it and all the rest of it. So firstly, as you can see, um, I've just covered up the whole area and then here I've got some lichen. This is stuff that I've saved from before and all I'm going to do is just start by removing this lichen that I've put on here before and you can reuse that so I'm just going to clean it up as best as I can and just save what I can it doesn't matter if I can't save all of it it doesn't really make a huge amount of difference so once I start clearing all of this you'll have a good idea of just the area that I want. I'll just go back up there, we'll put that. Some of this lichen will probably just sit on the top once I've done it. Like I said, I'm just cleaning it up. It doesn't have to be perfect. Some of it is proper stuck down, but you can reuse this scenery. So I'm going to reuse what I can. So there you go. So now sort of cleaned up that area relatively well. So that will get reused. I will take this tree out as well. And that's just to clear up the area for me to work in. We'll probably go back there. And now you can see the sort of area that I'm going to be working on. So now what you can see is um, I've taken a sharp knife and I've trimmed this back a bit because basically I'm not sure whether the rock mould will be too close to the railway line. So I've decided just to trim it back with a sharp knife and cut into it. Now, it, this is a good demonstration of me using the Oasis blocks and what you can do with it if you need to change it because the structural integrity doesn't change. As you can see, it just looks virtually the same. And the integrity of it is still exactly the same. And like I said, I've just used a sharp knife just to peel it, just to pare it back a bit. Because what I was a bit concerned about, and as you can see, look, there's a layer of plaster bandage and there's the oasis blocks. So I'm not going to be using that. And that's just to make sure that when the locos and the wagons come round, this, this is basically in line with this now. So when I put my plaster mould in here, it's, it's going to be far enough back that the wagons aren't going to hit into it. So that's what I'm going to be doing. So that's the reason why I've done that. So then the next thing you need to do is get your plaster. So here you can see I've got my filler and the filler is going to act as an adhesive and then you're just going to pop it on the back side of it and you're also going to pop it. Now what you need to do is also get some water. I mean this is just a spray bottle but it says the ice about it isn't it's just water and you just want to spray some water on the back of that. just want to get some filler onto that and basically get a good dollop of it and you just want to glue it on there like so And then when that dries off, that won't be going anywhere. And then basically you need to start building up the layers. So then you start looking at the rest of it, thinking, well, what else can I put around here? Now this bit is okay, but it's just got this pointy bit. So I've just peeled that back a bit. And that fits in there perfectly. Let's 
so that is quite good. But now what I want to do is try and find something that might fit underneath something like that. Let's see. Yeah, something like that. Oh, see if we've got anything. Let's see what else we've got. And a lot of this is just trial and error. You just sort of going, oh, I don't know if this is going to fit. Let's just place this bit here. Let's see if it fits. And and then you're just building it up. And like I said, that will go here. So I just want to see if there's another bit. So there's another little bit there that you could probably pop in as well. And like I said, you're just all you're doing is going through all the little bits that you've got, all the little pieces of rock that you've got, and you're just basically seeing what fits. And the thing is with this plaster is that you've got time. So if it doesn't quite fit, um, if it doesn't quite fit, you've got time to move it. So, just pop some, sometimes forget to put the water in, because it helps agitate it. And then, what I can do is I could actually possibly leave it like that, and I probably will do. And I'll probably put some more bits on that along here, but I might leave a bit of an edge. We'll see. We'll see what happens. Now you're going to take some of that just to make sure that when it all dries, it all dries. As you can see, once it's all blended in, it'll be fine. Right, so, got that. Let me clean my hands here. What have we got next? Let's see what we have next. Like I said, this is all about picking out pieces that I've got that might fit. And like I said, you don't have to be too sort of um, yeah, that will go there. Look, see, but you can see all these gaps. But we'll be filling in those gaps anyway, so it doesn't matter. So a bit of water on that to agitate it. That on there, and then. That will all go there. And then we have, let's see what else we've got. That sort of will fit the bill. I don't know whether we'll go with. That looks like that could go there, doesn't it? More water. A bit more filler and then you plonk it in like so
and then what we'll do is with one last piece i'm not sure if that piece will work that piece will work yeah let's move that a bit out of the way so it's got something proper to stick to like i said it doesn't matter if you kind of go over it because you're just covering it so it doesn't matter a bit more water I mean, obviously it's better to have a clean surface but like i said it does work this way so once it's all covered up you're not going to see it in you go and there's your rock face like that now Now we're going to have to do a bit of blending in here and there. So this is where you add a bit of filler and start stitching it in. You take a, take a paintbrush. And a bit of water. And you start infilling all the gaps. And what this does is A, it blends it all into the next piece of rock that you've got going on, but also it bonds it so it gives it strength. So again, you just put a piece of filler here. Wet your paintbrush. And then you basically smear it in and you blend it all in. And then you can't even tell now where all the joins are. I mean, obviously you can see, you can probably see there, look, there's a join there, and there's a join there where I haven't done anything. But at the top, you won't be able to see it. So once that's all dried in, you'll be able to blend that all in. So this is why I think it's better to um, create the wall first and then colour it because you can stitch it all in first because if you try and buy these ready moulds, these ready rocks, which you can, if you've got a small area to do, maybe that will work, but when you're doing these large walls, I think it's better to do it this way. And like I said, once this is all dry, it will all be sealed and you won't be able to tell where any of the joins are. Now there's one big one right down the middle there, which we're going to cover up now. You just have to... Get your filler in there, get your paintbrush, dip it in some water to make it more spreadable and then brush it in. And then Once you've painted it, you won't be able to tell anything. And then that's one of them done. I just need to put a bit more, because there's a gap here, there's a hole here. And then that is that. And then now you've got that all done. And like I said, underneath here, you can still see it, but you can't. But you can put some bushes and stuff like that and vegetation under there and stuff. Put some vegetation along the top 
and blend it all in. So that is now that done for that area. So after doing that rock mold, this is what I'm left with. So this is, should be enough to do the second area. And I'm going to take you over there now to show you the second area that I wanted to tackle with the rock molds. So if I just show you, that's that over there. So this is what we're left with and I'll take you over to the second area. So the second area, which is the main reason for buying the hydrocal and getting the rock molds done, is to tackle this whole back wall here, all the way along to here. That's where it finishes, on this corner here. So hopefully, what I've got left over will be enough to cover all of that. So I'm going to get on with that. I'm not going to bother boring you to tears because you sort of know what, I, what you've got to do if you want to do it. I'm going to carry on doing it and I'll show you how far I've got. So as you can now see, I've now done the wall. Now you can't really see it in great detail at the moment, but you can now see that I've blended it in and stitched it all together. Um, it was quite a bit more hassle than the other one. I'm going to take you off the tripod and show you exactly what it looks like. And like I said, any kind of gaps or anything like that will be filled by ballast or by filled by um, foliage and stuff like that. So I'm not too bothered. It all looks filled in and it looks good. And once it's all been painted and highlighted, I think it will look great. Um, you won't actually see that on this video, but you will see the one that I did at Goswell Sidings in this video, just so you can get an idea of what it's going to look like. And then when I come to do a layout update next time, I'll basically just show you the finished um, product, as they say. So let me just take you off the tripod and show you. But before I do that, let me just show you um, what I was actually left with in terms of rocks after doing those two bits. And I think you'll be surprised at what I'm left with. And I'm left with all of these rocks here that I can use somewhere else on the layout. Unfortunately, um, the one thing I have run out of is the adhesive, the, the, fill, the filler. Um, I've gone through all of that in terms of using it for adhesive and also for stitching so I can't actually do any more because I need to get some more filler but let me just take you off the tripod and I will show you in closer detail this end so we're now kind of handheld but this will kind of give you an idea of what it looks like and like I said you could have painted it prior but I'd rather have this all stitched in and blended in and then after paint it all in one go which is what I'll show you because I think it will look a lot better when it's done so I'm going to take you over to Goswell Sidings and then we'll talk about that. So there you go. So that's how it looks like at the moment at this end. But like I said, you won't see me finishing this one in this video, but you will see me finishing Goswell Sidings. So it gives you an idea of what to expect at the end. So I've just removed the covers briefly just to show you how it currently looks. And it might be a problem. The wagons will still be able to get round. And um, I'm just going to start painting this up and um, I'll show you how I do that and what colours I'm using and basically talk you through the process. So here comes the exciting bit, which is painting. This is always the fun bit of doing rock moulds because this is where they come to life. Now we're going to use a technique called the leopard spotting technique. Um, if you haven't heard of it, that's what it's called. And basically... You're just basically picking three colours. Now, obviously, the colours are totally your choice. Um, it's up to you what colours you use and what research you use and what you're doing, whether you're doing retaining walls, whether you're doing rocks. So it's totally, again, this is totally personal choice. But from my point of view, I'm just using random colours that I have lying around the flat. The important thing to note is that they are all acrylic not oil based, they're all acrylic based, so they, they basically go on as washes, so they can all mix with water. And I just happen to have this GWR light stone for the brown. Um, we're going to see how that goes. Um, like I said, this is completely random, 
I've also got some, I had some Vallejo Sky Grey. So that's going to be that one. And then the overall black wash is just going to be this glossy black that I'm going to use. But you can also use um, matte black or whatever. It doesn't really make a difference to be truthful with you. This is just the three colours that I had happened to have lying around that I know that just will just mix together and that I've used sort of in the past. It just sort of, to me, I just want to use a kind of a grey as a base and a brown earthy colour or whether it's a reddish colour or something and then the black as an overall wash. Now this is why I like to do this, make the whole slab first as opposed to painting it individually because it, I think it blends in a lot better. The other thing you're going to need is just um, a sponge and you just cut it up into little bits and pieces and I've just got three separate bits here, one for each colour and then you just start dabbing it on and see how we get on. And if that's not if it's not really enough which to me looks like it's a bit too watery I will just add some more Some more paint into it just to give it so it's basically just trial and error really to see what to see what it how it comes out oh you can see it's coming out now and all you're doing is you're just dabbing it on you don't want it to dab it all in one color all straight away you just want to Hopefully this is all coming out. Oh well, let me zoom you in a bit more. There you go. Still think it needs more. Mix it in a bit better. Oh yeah, that, you can definitely see that now. Okay. Like I said, you don't want to go over the whole lot in one go with the same colour. As you can see, I've just started off with one colour. And you can see it's just kind of... So let's see how we get on with this. Hopefully, this is quite strong as well. We'll see. See how this one goes. Oh, that's yeah. That seems to be okay. But hopefully, this is all coming out. But you can just. The reason to use the sponges is because you can get them into all the nooks and crannies. And especially if you use these little square kind of blocks. Next, so don't worry about, just let it flow wherever it wants to flow. And hopefully this is all coming out nicely. You can see it. Not sure about about the brown. I think it could have done with being a bit darker, but this is what I have. But sometimes when you do the wash in the end, it actually ties it all in, and that's what makes it pink. It's when you do the black. I added some more brown in there. Let's see how that comes out. See if it comes out a bit stronger. And you can just keep going over it till you get the effect that you want. Let 
No, get that right in there. Right, let's go back on the grey. You just keep going over it until you get what you want. Bit of scenery there. Keep dabbing it in. I still think it needs some more grey. I still think it's too watery. Like I said, just keep mixing and matching and till you sort of get the colours you like. It doesn't really doesn't matter. And that's the fun of it because it's just completely random. Right, use that. Make sure you use that. Yeah, that's pretty, pretty good. So what I'll do now is we'll go over with the black and see how it pans out. What that needs. And again, you just, when the black goes on, it highlights everything. Give it all. It doesn't matter whether you put a lot in or, or not. There isn't much left on this black, so. It's black, there's a black. Just there. I think it's the black that really brings it out, to be honest. What you. Because it really does highlight it. See if we can get a bit more grain to it. And then just go right into the crevices. Yeah, that looks. Let's just make sure it's right in there. I'm really pleased with that. That that looks that looks nice. Okay. I hope this has come out really well on the camera. Just going to drop just a tiny bit more brown in here. And I think that is, yeah, that's just great. Thing is, it's knowing when to stop. <laughs> That's the thing. It's knowing when to stop. But that looks ace. I'm really pleased with that. Right. So that's it. I'll get this a good old clean up. And then I'll show you what it looks like without all the without all the paint and everything in the way. So see you shortly. So here you go. 
this is now sort of finished. Um, I've blended it all in a bit. So it doesn't look like it's just a slab just been dumped there. And I think that looks a lot more believable than what I had before. And it just adds a bit of interest and adds a bit of rawness. And as you can see, where it's all been stitched together, all the colours blend in better than if you do it separately. But that's just my view of it. And I'm really, really pleased with that. That that looks really cool. So if you just sort of pan out, you can sort of see this is the scene from Goswell Sidings now. And if you sort of look at it from this end. I really like it. I think it's much more believable than what I had before. I, th I think it was too sheer before for it to sort of have all these this growth coming down, but that's just me, I guess. So as a bonus for you guys, I did actually end up doing this as well. And um, the reason being, I wasn't going to do it, but because I had the paint ready mixed, I just thought I'd just carry on. So this is still going to be drying, but obviously it's nowhere near finished. But now I've done the rocks and um, blended it in. I can then start moving on to the ballasting and then the foliage to blend it all in. So that's why I wanted to do the rocks first because I knew it was going to be messy. So I thought, well, if it's going to be messy, then I'll do it before I put the ballasting down. So now that that's all done and ready to go. You sort of pan back from it. I'm going to put some trees along here and that will blend in that corner. So all that all, all between there. And the bridge will hopefully have some sea foam trees if I can get some more in. But that sort of brings that round to here. So I'm really, really pleased with that. So there you go. So that's how I do it. So this concludes the end of today's video, this how-to video. I hope you've enjoyed it. I mean, this is just how I do it. Like I said, um, the moulds you use, the colours you use, that's totally personal choice, it's totally up to you. And like I said, you can use this technique for, um, if you buy retaining wall moulds, and you can just use the hydrocal and just pour it in, and you should still get the same result with your retaining walls if you use the plaster ones. Um, so like I said, a lot of it is open to interpretation, but this is just how I do it, and this is sort of the results that you can achieve. And if you like these results, and you can try it for yourself. And until the next time, it's goodbye from the Milton Hall District. My name's Susanna, and I live with trains. Bye-bye.